In the previous episode, we explore the genesis of Japan's kawaii or cute culture. And how girls called shoujo were persuaded to adopt it. After Japan was forced to open up to the world, the government tasked the popular magazines with educating young girls to become obedient wives and mothers. They were told that remaining pure and innocent, embodying the value of kawaii らしさor girlishness, should be their sole responsibility. And even today, both men and women of all ages still find youthful innocence compelling. This time, we'll explore how the obsession with kawaii spread to every aspect of Japanese daily life and culture. The verb, kawaii garu, another derivative of kawaii, means to love, adore, or give some special attention. This is a key word for this episode. During the 1960s and 1970s, Japan's rapid economic growth continued to deliver lifestyle improvements and reduce income inequality to the extent that the country eventually became known for its middle class of 100 million people. But it was also the beginning of a more fiercely competitive society. The corporate commitment to lifetime employment, coupled with an entrenched leadership, well-past retirement age, created a unique set of circumstances. Continuous migration towards overpopulated urban areas, coupled with an antiquated notion of salary men as warriors, whose first loyalty is to their employer, not their family. To attract the patronage or kawaii gara renu, the passive form of kawaii garu of their boss. Salary men devoted every waking moment to exhibiting their commitment. Working late, not taking holidays, finding excuses to work at weekends and on national holidays as a way to demonstrate their total commitment to the company. This included socializing with their colleagues until the last train home. Their wives were forced to take sole responsibility for raising children, running the household, and managing finances. Many would very quickly feel estranged from the drunken stranger who crept home late at night and work hard to ensure that their children could have very different life. Entry into elite universities was seen as the only way to enter the workplace higher up the corporate ladder. As early as 1960s, there was a boom in extracurricular cramming schools, condemning young children to similar lifestyle of unending work, and competition for that kawaii ga rareru patronage of their teachers and senior peers. In work and in education, the need to appear intelligent and no threatening took precedence. In 1974, Sanrio, a stationary manufacturer, began selling Hello Kitty coin purses. The white, round, kawaii, or cute cat illustrations capture the hearts of little girls at the time. Sanrio continuously created new characters that appeared on an expanding series of daily necessities. They soon became Japan's answer to Disney. Parents who had grown up in a time of great scarcity saw these cute, colorful objects as a way to express their love. Boys are more likely to use items with giant cartoon robots that essentially serve the same purpose. 
ザ・モー・アイテムズ・ウィズ・ハロー・キティ、キキ・ララ、オマイ・メロディ、ザ・トゥ・キャリード・ウィズ・ユー、ザ・モー・クリア・イト・ワス・トゥ・エブリワン、ハウマッチ・ユー・ア・ラフト・バイ・ヤ・ペアレンツ。On the other hand, in the 1970s, there were teenagers who rebelled against what they saw as a suffocating micromanist society. Collectively referred to as Yankees. They valued having a good time with their friends and didn't much care about whether that attract prejudice towards them. This would often lead to violence in schools and other forms of antisocial behavior. Many of these kids came from disadvantaged backgrounds or broken homes. Ironically, Kawaii Garu can also mean inflict pain on someone. Or put them through the mill when taking the noun form Kawaii Gari. These children, who for whatever reason could not receive sufficient parental affection, used violence to command respect and would give Kawaii Gari to anyone they didn't like. Many would end up joining right wing motorcycle gangs. Called Boso Zoku. The primary source of recruitment for organized crime in the form of the infamous Yakuza. In some ways, you could argue that these reactionary youths and their commitment to hierarchies of violence were actually much closer to the original samurai spirit than the corporate warriors prostrating themselves. At every turn. From the late 1970s to 80s, among female students who grew up with Shoujo Manga and Hello Kitty, a flat, round way of writing called Maru Moshi became very popular due to its cute looking appearance. In the 80s, one teenage pop idol caused controversy by questioning With a kawaiko pliko, which simply means pretending to be cute and innocent, was acceptable or not. She became an instant hit, and girls copied her hairstyle, fashion, and behavior. And this also further embodied the idea that it was acceptable for adult women to continue using Sanrio products. As a part of a continuing effort to present themselves as cute and inoffensive. In a culture that places excessive value on youth, women are still constantly strive to appear youthful, and Japanese men are fascinated by young girls. Although they seldom appear s to be any overt sexual intent, that would shatter their illusions. In parallel, family games consoles became popular among children. And in 1985, Nintendo launched Super Mario Bros. The first in a long line of cute characters. As you know, unlike PlayStation, Nintendo games consistently create bright happy worlds. From the 1990s onwards, The global popularity of these games contribute to men feeling less reluctant to own goods with cute characters. Hence today, Kawaii Koburu is used to describe men and women who present themselves as cute, innocent, and as threatening. According to research, cuteness can be soothing for Japanese people. Work very long hours and such enormous social pressure. Kawaii culture allows them to escape from the grim realities of their life. Current Japanese TV lends the impression that no one wants to grow up beyond the age of twelve. And it's difficult to think of other nations where Peter Pan syndrome 
forms such a key part of the national culture and character. As an adult, Japanese people are expected to follow the strict social norms and expectations, which are complex and often not very clear. However, the widespread perception that childhood is an idealistic moment before these pressures are free felt. Many Japanese adults seek the slightly nostalgic comfort of cuteness. It is probably universal to feel affection for cute children and animals. Their appeal is simple, easy, self-evident. Research in the emerging field of attention economies reveals that cute cats and babies can bypass our ability to navigate the world on autopilot with limited attention. But with the development of digital technology, our societies and relationships have become increasingly complex, and social media feeds anxiety about the search for approval to be liked and appreciated. People who are tired of dealing with complexity are attracted to things that are easy and simple. Don't you think? If so, doesn't it make sense that cute is now becoming a booming trend across the world?